So I found the perfect size brisket for two people that want to cook on the same day and eat it that evening. It's not hard. It's going to be delicious. Just you wait and see. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Todd. This is Greenhorn Barbecue. And do I have something special for you guys? It's not that special, but the size is, it's an eight pound uh, full packer brisket that I got at one of those Wally Worlds. It's not from Snake River Farms or one of these exotic uh, ranches and stuff. You know, it's a Swift, whatever that is. It uh, looks like it's choice. And, and that's just fine guys, because it's only eight pounds. So it's gonna give a chance of really seasoning it up the way I want to, not that size matters. It already seems to be trimmed up fairly well, probably just need to fine tune the fat cap a little bit. And uh, other than that, it's gonna be a pretty straightforward cook. I'm just gonna use some uh, schmear, like a yellow mustard, salt, pepper, garlic, and of course our favorite pepper flakes. It's uh, kind of a very thin point uh, or flat, and uh, we'll probably end up cutting away some of that. And uh, otherwise, it's almost a quarter inch in a lot of places, except through here. Um, so I'll probably take that down a little bit. And uh, I believe that's called the deckle, maybe. I don't know, but uh, this is really hard. Uh, can't even hardly push it in and stuff like that. So that, that's going to end up becoming tallow. And... Uh, it says it's going on the Traeger. It's a lot of airflow on a Traeger. Uh, you know, I'm going to round up the edges here a little bit, make it aerodynamic. Looks like a butcher got a little away from himself here and cut it right there, but that's okay, guys. Also, a lot of this uh, silver skin here, um, I'll do my best to kind of get rid of it. going to come in with my uh, typical schmear, which is yellow mustard. Um, you can use whatever you want. It's really a preference. It's not even required. So again, guys, you can use Worcestershire sauce. You can use uh, soy sauce. You can use all kinds of sauces. Do, do whatever you want, guys. So next thing I'm going to do, guys, is uh, hit it up with some of this uh, Redmond's uh, natural salt, guys. Give you a quick little sneak peek. I'll try to leave a link in the description uh, if we can get this online, but this is good quality salt. It's even a little coarse, but uh, I'll leave a link in the description. Go check it out. It's really high quality salt. Coarse ground black pepper. And gran just a touch of granulated garlic. Just a dusting. This stuff is actually very fine, so I'm just dusting it. And then what we really like around here is some uh, crushed red pepper flakes, because uh, we like the spice, guys. Spice is life. All right, guys, so you've seen my Traeger countless times. I don't need to reintroduce it, but let me tell you, this thing is 10 years old. I've modified it numerous times. I got the monster stack. I got a cart on here and uh, in a little table right here, among other things. I've never really ever had any problems with it, although it is getting old. I've had the typical uh, fires and uh, feed problems where the smoke comes back and stuff like that, but it's never killed it yet. So I'm, I'm really lucky. In fact, I've probably jinxed it now it's probably gonna die after this cook but uh, you know it keeps on uh, ticking so I'm really appreciative appreciative of that so anyway I'm gonna be setting it for uh, 225 I'm gonna be putting the brisket on and uh, again I've got plenty of videos uh, with this trigger and uh, oh also I have the uh, tell true uh, thermometer up here uh, kind of a truth data if you will because the temperature thing right here has sometimes been known to be finicky. So anyway, I'm going to go ahead and get busy and uh, see you guys in a minute.
guys. So it's been about three hours since I put it on the Traeger. Uh, that was about 6 a.m. or so. And what it's time to do now is do the bark test. And that is when you flick at the bark, it doesn't easily come off and stuff. So what I like to do and what most people like to do is start spritzing right about there. And so what I'm using is a 50-50 mix of filtered water and organic apple cider vinegar. I'm just gonna liberally spray that brisket starting now until you know about every hour or so, probably all the way up until I'm wrapping. So as you saw from that earlier clip in the kitchen, I'm rendering down some tallow, which is all the trimmings from the brisket. I'm doing that in a stainless steel pot. And then when I'm done, I'm gonna filter that out. That's what I'm gonna to use to moisten up that brisket just prior to wrapping. So it's gonna come out really, really good. All right, guys, it's time to wrap. Not the whole show, just wrapping that brisket on pink butcher paper. Guys, this is a key step. Now you could use foil if you want. Now, just a gut instinct of mine, today I'm gonna to go with uh, pink butcher paper. So now that brisket has really shrunk up and this bark is starting to look good. I would like it to look a little darker, uh, but you know, the internal temperature is getting near to about 170 in some places, about 165 in other places. It's too small to sit there and wait for, for the stall to finish. I don't think it even stalled. And it's just so small, I'm worried about it overcooking. So I'm gonna get that thing wrapped up. And I'm also gonna be using some tallow that uh, I made from this very brisket. Um, it's starting to coagulate a little bit, uh, but otherwise it's uh, nice and clear. I've strained it twice through some cheesecloth came out really good. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this in wrap. All right, guys, look at this. If you could smell what I'm smelling now, mm, God. You know, it's been just about eight hours, guys, so I think I said we uh, wrapped for six and then uh, uh, cranked it up to 300, put it back on the Traeger for the last two hours. You know, it's been cooking a little bit faster. Now this is a, a pretty small brisket and um, my biggest fear was overcooking it. So I made sure to really pay attention to those temperatures. Today I was just using the Thermo Pro TP19. Uh, if you're interested, uh, I had a little link to our Amazon store down below. Um, tell me what you guys use to track temperature and your experiences. Uh, I'd like to hear about that down below. Anyway, um, getting back on with where we're at now. So a friend once told me that uh, you take the brisket out and you set it on the counter, don't unwrap it, and just let it sit there at room temperature. Uh, till it gets down to probably around 170 to 140 or something like that. Um, so it's gonna cool off for a little while. Um, I'm not gonna put it in a cooler, wrap it with a blanket or all this other, uh, you know, black magic uh, theories that people have. It might work for them, but you know, it's never actually worked for me. I ended up overcooking it and either the bottom or one part of the brisket ends up shredding off as I'm, as I'm cutting it. You might've experienced the same thing and. I just don't feel like uh, repeating what really hasn't been working. So aside from all the seasoning and the time and everything like that, and the temperatures, um, the only difference is I'm just gonna let it sit out on the counter uh, wrapped up. So anyway, this is a perfect opportunity to uh, say thank you for uh, watching this show so far. And if you are appreciative, we'd really like it if you hit that subscribe button and uh, just tell us about your barbecue experience over at our Facebook group, Greenhorn Barbecue Beer Discussions. Uh, it's a private group to uh, kind of keep the spam down, but uh, really all it's about sharing ideas and, and stuff like that. So hit us up over there. I'm also on all the typical social medias and things and uh, go say off the bat, I would say it feels good. The bottom is what I'm always worried about it getting overdone, but I think it actually feels pretty good. All right, let's take a peek here. I always end up splashing. Okay, the bottom stuck a little bit to the butcher paper, but not that bad. Okay, 
Get a little bit of this juice. I can't wait anymore. I'm just going to go cut it down the middle. Okay. It's definitely a lean brisket. All right. It's not bad. Yeah, you can see that little scar that I made right there. Not bad, not bad. Decent smoke ring for a Traeger. You know, that's oxidation. Uh, it's not hard to get that on a Traeger if you know what you're doing, but uh, it doesn't affect the flavor as far as I'm concerned. And I'm just going to go ahead and cut off the end right here. A little overdone, just what I thought. But not bad, not bad. Okay. Not bad. And hey, let me tell you, this is a lean piece of meat. I don't know if you can see that, but it is lean. Basically, this is the flat, and this is what's left of the point. Never had a very large point. But uh, I'll take a little piece of that right now. Mmm. Let me tell you, it tastes good. Mmm. All right, guys. Well, I would say for where I got it, which was a Walmart, on uh, the price I paid, I think uh, I think we did all right. Not a bad Friday night brisket. You know, it only took uh, eight hours to cook. I probably could have pulled it off an hour sooner, um, and um, you know, an hour, hour and a half to rest, and then we're eating. So someone once told me that good barbecue always starts with the best piece of meat that you can afford, you need to find, or find and afford. I could have probably looked around a little bit longer, spent some more money, but it was kind of an impulse buy. But this is actually a decent brisket for the price, under $4 a pound. It was a nice small size, so I knew that I wouldn't be a slave all day to the grill to get that thing cooked. I was able to set it on a Traeger, forget it, and I even went shopping, did a couple things around the house, and I was still able to uh, tend to it. So I think that's the winner right there. So guys, leave a comment down below and tell me how you would have done this differently. And uh, hit us up on uh, social media and you know comment about uh, all your brisket cooks and stuff. So anyway guys, appreciate you stopping by and uh, we'll see you on the next one.